Hi guys, I'm Coley D. Welcome to Crazy Blessed Worship. I am really glad you're here. I know I went kind of quiet on you guys this week, but I can't wait to tell you guys why. We'll get to that at the end. Um, real quick, I want to kind of go back and talk about um, those of you who have watched Hannah Keeley's Time Out Tuesday. Um, or if you haven't, totally go back and check it out. Um, if you did watch it, I'm just kind of curious, like, how many of you are like me and had our master mom, warrior women, like the cartoon pop into your head? <laughs> it's like, she was spot on painting a picture of these guys to me. Um, and what popped into my head was Hannah Kerr's song, Warrior. So, um, she was kind of touching on that, and then she was kind of launching into what I love Hannah quoting, is she'll just be like, just a mom, whatever. She kind of went on that last night, and when she was talking about there is a calling on your light, that's kind of one of the things that I want to touch base in here, too, is whatever your reason for being here, looking and focusing on worship, I feel like there is a calling on your life to some aspect to that, and I want to help you grow that. Um, so we're going to launch right in about how worship starts at home. Now we've talked about, what do you think about that phrase, home is where the heart is? Well, we've talked a little bit about your heart and preparing your heart for worship. So this is where we want to make sure we're making Jesus feel at home. If you've created just a little compartment for him, we're going to find out what ways we can um, utilize to grow that's going to help our faith, that's going to grow the way that we're even able to worship. You can just simply be singing the songs now to genuinely feeling those songs and actually really connecting with God. Um, but I've been focusing a little bit on a role as a parent too and, I, and focusing on God and His role as the Father. Um, it's kind of like He is setting that example for us. Um, I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Uh, train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, that's kind of what God's guidelines are for us in the Bible, right? Studying and learning those, he gave those to us to teach us the way that we should go. And uh, in worshiping with our kids, it's up to us to lay out um, where they should go. If we start when they're young, or if your kids are older or grown, they're still going to look to you and what you do in worship. Um, so think about your environment a little bit that you're creating. Um, it's where I love in my master university, we've learned a lot about getting rid of the clutter, which is always kind of an ongoing battle for us, but the tools that we've gotten for that have really kind of helped clear that. And I've seen a lot of moms comment how their environment has changed and their kids are responding more positively. Um, there's different examples like that. Well, do your kids see you worship? Um, I know like Sunday school, we might drop the kids off in Sunday school, so they may or may not, depending on your church, get to come and actually sit in the worship service. Um, so if they are in the worship service with you, are they observing you just kind of singing the words and kind of observing and going with the group like we've been taught our whole lives to do in most situations? Um, or are you really feeling it? Are you blocking it out? Um, everything around you and everything but God, are you focusing on that one and that reason that we're worshiping? Um, and then at home, uh, everybody has a crazy schedule as a mom. I get that. So you may not have that time in the morning. Maybe your time is the evening. I implore you to find time in your day. I'm going to give you a starter of a five-minute challenge. Just five minutes. Take a timer on your phone and just put worship, something simple that's going to trigger you to set aside five minutes. And maybe it's a snooze thing. If your alarm goes off and it's not convenient, I get that. But don't let it snooze 20 times and eventually just go, oh, I don't have time today. Find that five minutes. Your kids are going to see you in your actual attempt to purposely do this. Now, in the morning, my kids are little. I get up earlier than everyone else. I'll sit in front of my um, windows, whether the sun's shining or not. I just kind of sit there and I'll meditate on something. I'll sing some songs. I might be sitting there like this. I don't care. My kids want to come out. They're like, oh, mom's worshiping. <laughs> but they see me doing it. Now, they're eventually, as they're older, going to learn 
and kind of copy you like that. Um, my five-year-old, I was just like floored the other day. She starts running around and she's singing these worship songs that I didn't even really realize she knew. Um, yes, we sing together and do different things, but she's starting to pick the stuff up even from the radio that I listen to. And then we talk about inviting God into our lives and the environment, environment we have. Um, I don't know what your local radio station is, but until I actually started having worship music on just in my home, even playing it on a very low volume, or if you're one that can't really stand noise, put it on volume one. You're inviting the Lord into your home. And honestly, the level of peace that I really noticed and observed in my home when I just started playing worship music 24-7, I can't even explain the difference that came into my home. It was that profound. And there were certain times in my day, too, when I would just feel, all of a sudden I'd catch a song that was playing, and it would just really tie into whatever was going on in that moment, and it felt like, God reaching right through that song, being like, you need to pause and reflect on this. And the way that that can tie into your life and your growth is just huge. Um, but moving on, I just, I want you guys to think about what you're doing in worship. I want you to tell me, what do you do? How do you bring worship into your family? Or don't you? Um, and if you don't, why not? I'd really like to know. Um, there's no judging here at all, so please make sure you know that. Um, but we're leaving a legacy for our kids, whatever that is. If we don't include it in our lives, that's more than likely what's going to happen with your kid. If we're actually including these things in our lives, odds are good not only will they continue it in their lives, it'll go down through their children and their children's children and so on and so forth. So, um, another song that just really comes to me and speaks to me, there's Nicole Nordman, she wrote this song, it's called Legacy, and um, I want you guys to reflect on this week, I'm going to post that in the comments too, but there's a huge reason I want you to listen to it, and I really feel like when you listen to it, you'll know right away, so. Um, another thing I want to quick touch base on, Matthew chapter 18, verses 2 through 4, he called a little child to him, and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whatever takes the, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now that hits me because I had a lot of people pass on and different scenarios happen when I was younger that I kind of had that, I guess some would say, had to grow up too quickly. I used to be a very serious person, like way too serious. It took my husband to actually like teach me to be playful again, because <laughs> he's kind of one of those silly ones. <laughs> so, um, but thinking about that, where are you in your life too serious? And I want to kind of look at, yes, we're talking about our children and worshiping, but we need to look at things with the childlike faith in our worship. So this is where our kids can teach us in reverse. I was just talking about us teaching them and setting the example. Your kids are here for teachers, for you too. So look at them for your example. They're humble. They are simple. And I'm not saying like the simple stupid. I mean, we're talking about simplicity and that, that faith like a child. I know somebody whose bird died. And they were like sitting there mortified trying to figure out what to do about it and how they're going to explain this to their little four-year-old. And they looked over and it's like the four-year-old walked in the room and they're going, oh my goodness. And that four-year-old instantly gets down and starts praying. And is just absolutely faithful that God's going to ensure that that bird is in the right place and so thankful that it knows where its bird went. I mean, you guys, that to me was so touching that the first thing that child thought to do was actually thank God. Well, the grown-up was sitting there going, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? We need to learn to look to God right away, thank Him right away, or pray right away, whatever the scenario is. So it's those little examples and kids that we've got to learn to slow down and just observe and really take in. Because those are lessons that God is showing us. 
And if you think about that simplicity in our faith, we need to step back in that. Just knowing that faith builds character. And the process starts where you are. And it starts when you're a child. So without faith, we can't please the Lord. And how can we praise Him? Like it just kind of made me think of, uh, there's that Brandon Heath song, Faith, Hope, Love, Repeat. Um, I'll paraphrase it a little bit, but there's, Well, I brought you into this world, and I'm sorry it's a little bit crazy. But I promise you there's so much good, though the future is a little bit hazy. Just faith, hope, love, faith, hope, love, repeat. Those words are so simple. God brought us into this world. He knows it's a little bit crazy. But He's wanting us to see the good in it. All of that stuff that we've built up, that we've put walls, and we see all this negativity, and we're feeling like there's so much hopelessness sometimes. God's got so many reminders of that. So much good. It's just our faith and our hope in Him. And just that love. And just keep remembering those things. It's so important. Um, sounds like it's getting a little crazy in my house. So we're going to go on here. But I have a kid challenge for you. Now, I know some of us have older kids. But for those of you that have younger kids, I want you to watch your kids this week. And I want you to come back and share with me. Like, What do you observe? What childlike faith or what childlike things do they do that we could kind of twist around into our adult selves and handle that seriousness? Where can we actually revert back to where we should have before we were told that we have to be a certain way by the world? And if they're older, I want you to think about back when they were little. Go through those old pictures. Goodness, if they're piled up on your computer or if they're piled up in stacks and boxes, I want you to go back and reflect on why you have those pictures and what it was about those moments that made you want to take those pictures. I really feel like something's going to call to you and pull out of that. And I want you, this is what my kid challenge for you, is I want you to create that worship time. So again, remember that five minute timer. That's all I want you to have. And if you want to expand on that, great. You'd be surprised how far you can go in there. My favorite thing that I do with my kids is, I, I really love Mercy Me. That's like, they're so uplifting. And there's one DVD or CD that I'll throw on. And we'll just like kind of blast it. And we'll run around our dining room table. And if we just kind of turn it into a game. Honestly, through a whole CD, I get in my, my workout for the day. I mean, really pooped after that. But... The kids have so much fun, and I know when they're grown-ups, they're going to remember running around the dining room table with their mom. I don't have energy to do that all the time. I know I don't. They know I don't. But you know what? Even those days that I do have the energy versus when I don't, it's still worth trying to get just even one or two laps around the table. <laughs> so... If you haven't done it, try it. I don't care if you have adult kids. Chase each other around the darn table or the sofa. Just do it. Trust me. Um, but it's just thinking of things in that different way. This is where I was talking about how this is master mom worship. If you, I want, kind of want to look at a different spin on what we've learned if you're part of Mom Master University as what we're learning to be a master mom. That different spin I want to put on it is I want to make sure we are parenting like the master. So thinking about all those things and that thinking of our children, thinking how we are our, our his children, how are we going to bring that into our worship and just our lives in general. Now, kind of moving on into what we're at right now is we are in week four of Crazy Blessed Worship. And as I promised, that means February is around the corner, and we're going to be starting up the Crazy Blessed Worship Collaborative. Now, right now, that is exclusively for Mom Master University students or alumni. And uh, we're going to be kind of breaking into our groups. I am really excited. I already had one of you sent me some lyrics in a song just last night and today, and 
I just really feel like there's so much potential in there already. There's so many cool things. Um, what I've been working on, um, I've been setting up people um, to later on. We're going to be doing podcasts. So um, we were talking about uh, Wounded war Worship Warriors, I think was the comment. And honestly, I found an author two days later that she had written a book really tied into this title. And I've been networking back and forth with her a little bit. And she's actually, I'm really excited. I'm going to get a copy of her book. I'm going to cover it and we'll be talking about that in here. And she's going to come on and podcast if we can work that in her schedule. So um, that's coming up a little bit down the road. We will be doing podcasts. We'll be doing a little bit less YouTube. I'm still going to keep doing this with the YouTube videos in that um, Crazy Blessed Worship is a worship ministry at its core. So we're going to have the collaborative side, and this page is going to remain that growth in worship. Um, but we're also, we have a few people that aren't my Master University students, so I understand those of you watching this might be a little confused on some of the things. It's okay. We're not, this is not to be a pushy. You must join this. But um, I would hope that you guys can see the benefit and the growth in all the members on here. Because most of, most everyone is my Master University in here. But just grow with us. That's, that's the ultimate goal here. And most people on here are my Master University mentors. So I really encourage having a mentor. And if anybody that you really click with or someone has invited you here, I'd love for you to reach out with them and talk to them more about my Master University. Um, I would love to ultimately have a group where we all get together and we meet up somewhere at the Mom Mastery Live. I can't guarantee like that will necessarily to play there. I know that's a pretty packed program, but if I can find a venue nearby, um, I'd love to be able to get us all together for worship time. So um, this year it's in San Diego, California. But um, what we're going to be doing is just growing. That's really what I want to do because I know the more that this group grows, the more that we network, the more I'm going to be able to stretch the funding for this stuff. Um, right now I've been doing pretty much everything out of my own pocket. And um, besides setting up podcasts, um, I'm in the beginning steps of creating a recording studio. I've signed up for mixing and mastering classes. and um, I've been in and out of different studios. I've had some really great teachers. and. Honestly, if you have a song and it's going to cost you $500, you're not going to publish it, right? You're not, you're not going to want to go in that studio unless, like, you know, it's top dollar and you know this one song is going to go. Most of us, we want to worship or we want to create our songs, and it's just not feasible for your typical stay-at-home mom to be able to just produce our music. So I'm creating ways that we can all collaborate together because again that keeps funding down. If you want to grow this stuff, I'm not charging a membership right now. Like right now you guys are my my initial group. I am growing with you guys because you're choosing to be in this with me. And uh, I'm just I'm working on baby steps that are leading up to having a production company. This is you can call me a little hee-haw on this one, but I'm kind of looking at myself right now, I guess, like a worship farmer. I just, we're planting seeds in what it is to be a true worshiper. We talked a little bit about worshiping in spirit and truth. And uh, I really want to make sure that everybody that comes here is not only able to get something out of this that will help them grow in worship as a Christian, but ultimately with your relationship with God. And this whole program that's kind of come together, we talked a little bit about my silver glitter notebook and how this uh, worship program came together. We're going to be launching more into that next month as we talk a little bit about the collaborative and getting it set up. But you guys, I'm really excited with what's going to happen here. I can't get into it because we're running out of time right now, but stay excited. Tell me. Come back with your challenge. I want to hear about your five minutes and what you did with them each day. I want to hear about what you got out of either watching your kids or reflecting back on your kids. And if you don't have kids, watch your dog. <laughs> I'm so glad you joined me. Thank you so much for coming here. I'm wishing you all a crazy blessed week, and I can't wait to see you again.